Hello all, Knife Edge UK here, uh, back again to have a look at a few different things from the collection, um, relatively uh, relatively recent bits and pieces that are coming through, um, and, uh, and we're going to look today at the Oz Machine Company, Roosevelt. Um, so yeah, so without, uh, without any further ado, let's uh, put this next to some others and get some size comparisons. Uh, this is the first one of these videos that I'm shooting in a little batch today. Um, so whenever you're watching this, I apologise for the fact that it's even flakier than usual. Um, it's just because my brain isn't in gear as yet. So there it is next to a large Sebenza 21, um, a 3-inch Shamwari. Um, I could go through loads more, but I don't think I'm going to bother. And next to a ruler so there you go so as you can see it's a fairly moderately sized um you know edc knife there's been an awful lot said about the um the oz machine company roosevelt um online you'll see a lot of reviews out there uh, kevin left the edc has done reviews on this uh stasa uh, there's, there's there's a lot of different content um, and I've wanted to try one for quite a long time. A couple of friends of mine um, have got them um, alongside those guys I mentioned. And have uh, overall, the, the response to them has just been uh, universally, stupidly excited. Everyone loves them. They're very, very, very heavily hyped. And when that happens, I always have just a little bit of concern that maybe some of it is, um, some of it is just hype. Um, and so, uh, you know, getting this, I... I wondered, you know, uh, this one is number 0379, and upon receiving this, uh, yeah, okay, um, I get the hype. It, it, is, it is that good, so let, let's go over it bit by bit. So this particular one has quite a few of the kind of most upgraded features. The way that these are generally sold now is a small batch are made, um, and then they go up for a lottery that you sign. You have about five minutes to sign uh, up for the lottery on the um, Oz Machine uh, website. And from there, you know, you get drawn amongst all those other people, and then you can buy whatever knives they've got available. Uh, this one was, I think originally this one was actually done for a show uh, with a, with several others that were the same spec. And so it has got quite a few of the most kind of upgraded features on it. So let's go over it properly at 2 minutes and 34 in already and I'm still rambling. Okay, so up front, uh, we've got a blade here of Zephanet. This is LC200N by a different name. I believe it's actually still made by the same people, so I'm not entirely sure whether there's two trade names. But nevertheless, that's what it is. It's a highly corrosion resistant steel. Uh, you'll know it from things like the Spidey Chef uh, and, you know, some of the Salt Series knives as well as numerous other uh, custom pieces as well. It's an excellent steel. Um, he's now using Magna Cut. I th I'm not sure whether it's exclusively Magna Cut now, uh, but it's a lot of Magna Cut going forward as far as I'm aware. Um, the blade is a tall, full flat grime with a small swedge. There are swedgeless ones as well. Uh, they were originally swedgeless when he first started out. Uh, but now uh, they tend to be swedged, but he has been doing some uh, little batches without swedges. This is a CNC, um, what I would refer to as a CNC custom, you know, so a very small producer CNC made knife, uh, kind of even smaller production than people like Grimsmo, for example, uh, just pulling a name out of, of midair. Uh, so yeah, that, that's what you're looking at here. The blade is gorgeously ground. It's super thin behind the edge. It's quite thin in terms of blade stock itself. If I get something like the, uh, here's an MP1 from Hindra. So you can see, you know, we are a long way away from something like a Hindra's classic blade stock. That's the same as an XM18 3.5 inches blade stock. Um, so it's a very, very good slicer. The edge that it came with, um, I don't think this is, a, I think this was still a factory edge when it came to me, um, untouched up and barely used. It's a very, very good edge out of the box. Um, I think he's probably using a fixed angle system um, and he's getting a really nice kind of highly reflective, uh, largely mirror polished edge on there. Excuse me. <clears throat> so... And um, so, yeah, you then got this lovely uh, blade slot um, or opening slot, I should say. You know, a lot of people love these knives because they have particularly good reverse flick um, action. And yeah, it's it's really good from that point of view. So in terms of the way the blade is done, that's excellent as well. You've then got jimping um, on the spine. It's kind of a nice indexing jimping, but it's not aggressive. Um, it it holds in position really, really well, but it's 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 not at all, you know, uncomfortable um but also not without any any use incidentally 
I've moved on too quickly here. I did say this was the first of a batch of these videos, so it is quite scatterbrained, I'm sorry. This blade is is, is with his acid wash finish. Uh, this is another kind of, you know, upcharge kind of option that he has done here and there. Um, I really didn't expect to like this finish that much before I got this knife in hand. I absolutely love it. It's very smooth. It's got this really interesting mottled pattern. I'm not sure how he attains um, this kind of... Uh, it's not a stone wash. Uh, I, maybe it is a stone wash. Maybe it's just a very, very coarse open stone wash. I, I have no idea, but it's it's just really, really nice. Um, it looks great, feels great, and it's held up quite well in the admittedly light cutting this has done with me. Uh, handle. So you, you have flat slabbed handles milled out. I'm not sure that I'll be able to show you the milling. No, I can't, but there's plenty of pictures around online. Um, incidentally, this has all of the, with the exception of the Magna Cut, this particular knife has all the most recent iterational changes um, that you'll find on Roosevelt's. They have changed a little bit over time, um, and this one has um, all the current features. Uh, golf putter milling, he refers to this as, like the face of a golf putter, the grip face, um, you know, the ball striking surface. This one, excuse me, has been done in uh, two-tone anodization. So you've got, I think he said it was a 25 volt blue um, anodization on the flats, and then the actual milling lines are done in purple. In person, this gives this like a really interesting kind of shifting blurple thing, um, and you can really see it on the on the sides of the frame. For whatever reason, it really doesn't show that well in pictures or video. Uh, I'm not really sure why, it just doesn't really come through. Uh, this one has black um, black titanium hardware, really, really nicely blackened. You can see it's got a blackened backspacer as well. And then the pocket clip is Zerkatai, done in one of these more unusual kind of satin and polished Zerkatai finishes, which I really, really like this kind of finish on Zerkatai. I quite like Zerkatai full stop. I'm not a massive Timascus fan um, or anything like that, but I do quite like when there's zirconium mixed in. Um, and it's, I don't know how they managed at Oz to get this. And hopefully you can see it in the lighting that I have here. There's both of the colors that you see in the handle are in alongside the black and zerk and it's just really really beautiful um yeah I, I i love this clip i have to say i'm not one always for fancy materials but that um i really like and i think it sits really well with this far flashier for me than normal knife um before i got this in hand i would absolutely have said that i would want you know a relatively plain you know still golf putter milling so i really really like this in terms of look um, but I would have wanted something quite simple, still probably a Zerkatai clip, but that probably would have been about it on the knife. You know, it would have been quite restrained. Um, now that I have this particular one in hand, it's totally stunned me how much I like this. I love the look. So obviously this is all subjective, but I really like it. On to um, more objective matters. This is known as an excellent ergonomic knife with good reason. It sits in the hand beautifully in a sabre grip. You have this full forward choil and the nice thing about this choil is um if you go back in my videos you'll find um a video on the quiet carry drifter and i complained in that video that there was a little bit too much of the thinness of the blade that you ended up intersecting with with your your leading finger this one because most of it is the flat portion of the handle and then the full width of the tang you just don't feel that at all. It's really, really comfortable. Hammer grip is quite comfortable as well. It's, in my hand's not as comfortable as Sabre, but it's still comfortable. From there, uh, choking back is okay. My finger starts to kind of lose traction at the back, but it's fine. I'm not really sure why you would want to do that, but you can if you want more reach. Um, and pinch grips aren't bad at all, actually. They're better than I expected them to be with this knife. So overall, um, ergonomically, it's very good. Action. So I touched on the fact that we have this reverse... Um, flick hole here which is excellent but it actually deploys forwards just by running into the hole really nicely it slow opens really well and whoops and the detent is beautifully tuned which at nine minutes brings me on to one of my favorite things about the Roosevelt inside here and I'm not going to be able to show it adequately um incidentally uh Knife Nerdery, Knife Nerdery? I think it's Knife Nerdery, did a video showing the internals of this knife, so head over there if you want to have a look. Effectively, there are two detent balls running in here, and the way that it works is quite interesting. Um, when he first did these, the, the actual one of the detent balls was the lock face, 
Um, a bit like you'd find on, you know, the latest Chris Reeve, you know, the the Sebenza 31, the Omnumzan, uh, the Incozi. This doesn't have that anymore. It's now got a lock bar insert, and you can see through there the little protuberance from the steel lock bar insert engaging the tang. But the, the two balls mean that you get a single click. And the acoustics of this knife are beautiful. Super snappy and very glassy on the close. And what happens effectively is, as the blade is opening, you have a point at which it's on one ball currently, and then it just shifts to the other one about there, and then goes to close. So you can get the extra little click, but it's so close, and the angle, at the point at which you engage the detent is so early on this knife that, oh, yeah, it, it, it's really, really good. The moment you, the moment you break the detent, the blade is, the detents are up on the tang, and it's just, yeah, it's great. The action is every bit as addictive as people say it is. It's a fidgety dream, and there are little details like the way that the um, Oz logo and the number are there, and then you flick it, and they're gone, um, which is just really good. And then the glassiness on the clothes. This is a very light blade, and it just glides home with a really I mean I can't fail this detent but yeah it rolls out really comfortably as well it's it's great this knife is not hype this is now my probably my favorite CNC custom style knife alongside people like the Grimsmos like I've mentioned Herman Skiff you know there, there are a whole range of guys doing great CNC work um Alongside maybe Cody Utzler, which is a very sort of different style of knife, but is also a CNC maker. Uh, this is probably my favourite now. And uh, yeah, I recommend it highly. If you can get one of these at the table price, um, even with the increased table prices, you know, the, the prices continue to um, to escalate direct from maker on these. Uh, they are being made pretty regularly. You do, you know, it is just an element of luck unless you're going to play the in pay the inflated uh, secondary prices. But I don't think these are massively overpriced at the current secondary prices in terms of just overall quality. Um, you know, this feels like a knife worth the, the sorts of secondaries, if you look at the date of this video, that we're seeing right now. But uh, the table price of, you know, around $800, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, these, I see that all day long quite comfortably. So there you go, guys. Um, thank you for sticking with me. Sorry it was a bit scattergunned. And uh, there you go, the Oz Machine Company, Roosevelt. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.